How about this? You know, before they had Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, Mega Man 4, Mega Man 5, Mega Man 6, Mega Man X. My favorite soccer game probably ever made. Uh, that is Mega Man Soccer. Don't laugh. Mega Man 2634. Before the Mega Man TV show, the Mega Man board game, the Mega Man pillow, and mouse pad, and boxer shorts, and shot glass, and others, there was Mega Man 1. The game which started the series which shouted back at its critics saying, No you change. I'm fine the way I am. All this to say that I'm very excited to be teaching this class today, and this Mega Man 1 walkthrough. So let's get started now. I want second, Professor. Ah, it's my TA and our resident fact finder fluff, everyone. You're a bit early today, aren't you? I'm still working on the intro here. Yeah, I know, but I'd be remiss if I didn't point out from a minute ago that that's not at all how you read Roman numerals, Professor. Yeah, it, it was just a joke. It, it's the tainment part of the infotainment of the series, Fluff. Yeah, I'm sure there's one guy out there who laughed somewhere. Well, while I've got you, though, um, and we'll get into the Mega Man walkthrough in just a moment, but I'm just curious, considering this game did launch one of the most well-known video game series of all time, how well did this game specifically perform upon its release? Yeah, you know, I couldn't find definitively how many copies Mega Man 1 sold, but in doing some math on what I do know, I estimate it to be somewhere around 500,000 copies. That was good, not great for the time. Despite the lackluster sales, thankfully though, the higher-ups at Capcom saw the potential in the series, and greenlit a sequel which would go on to be one of the best-selling and greatest NES games of all time in Mega Man 2. That's true. But regarding the sales, P.J. Inafune, who created the final animation of Mega Man based on its creator Kitamura's initial design, placed the game's lack of success in America largely on the awful artwork which Capcom famously commissioned in a single day, with the artist purportedly spending only six hours on the box art. I've actually got a picture right here. That is awful. It looks like a cyberpunk fever dream somebody vomited up. Did I forget this game takes place in Vice City? And what the hell are those things on the ground? Is it truffle season? And what about Mega Man himself? Mega Man looks like a man baby with severe scoliosis and that Benjamin Button disease. They couldn't at least be bothered to tell the animator the one important detail about Mega Man? That he has a literal cannon for an arm and doesn't hold a gun like an a-hole? In Mega Man's defense, he looks just as conflicted about holding the gun. Yeah, that's not the face of a robot who is confident he'll go in the star in a thousand games. I was going to say that's the face of a robot who can't be sure if they just farted or sharted. And he knows he can't check because it took him an hour to get into the suit in the first place. Rain boots included. <laughs> he looks like Cutman's mom just called his mom to tell her Mega Man just threw ten tons of bricks Gutsman style at Cutman, who was destroyed in the exchange, and now Mega Man knows he's gonna get it. He looks like his normal suit was at the dry cleaners, so he had to suit up as Dr. Light's latest abandoned robot, Latex Condom Man. <laughs> he looks like he's wondering, is it too late to go back to veterinary school? But Dr. Light slapped him and threw a slur-laced tirade, said, no robot of mine is going to veterinary school, and he made Rush Dog to shut him up instead. <laughs> he looks like he's mugging a guy behind the camera and is just realizing that all of those explosions he set off in the background as a diversion probably weren't necessary. He looks like... Hello class, and welcome to this Mega Man 1 walkthrough here on Video Games 101. If you're looking for the classes for the other Mega Mans, or Mega Men, the other games in the Mega Man series, they are being held all over this building. Quite frankly, we don't have enough rooms to accommodate all of them. But uh, if you're looking for the class for Battletoads, that's being held in the Bond Man stage. That's a reference which will make more sense a little bit later on in this Mega Man 1 walkthrough. Now, in terms of difficulty, Mega Man 1 
Actually, I would call one of the more difficult games in the series, outside of one particular trick slash hack, which is incidentally one of the Briggs notes. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't know it. We'll talk about it in a moment. But with that in mind, this game is a bit more manageable. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10, which on the frustration scale equates to throwing your controller across the room, maybe in a one-off fit of rage. But fear not. We have all of our TA standing by, Fluff, Blaze, and Gary. And we're going to give you the tips and tricks which you need to succeed in this game. I guarantee it. So, let's take a look at the Briggs notes, speaking of. Number one, first and foremost. Good rule of thumb with every Mega Man game. Know the robot order. And, in other words, the weaknesses of each robot. I recommend starting off with Bomb Man. And that's how we're going to do it in this playthrough. Number two is use the pause hack, which... Again, you, maybe you've heard of this before, but we'll talk about that once we get to the first boss. And last but not least, use the magnet beam to clear pits more safely, and just get around in general more safely. And we'll have Blaze talk a bit more about that once we pick that up in a couple stages. But well, let's get things going here and take a quick peek at the controls for Mega Man. So A is jump, B fires the weapon you have selected. You can change which weapon you have selected with the start button to bring up the menu. Assuming you have more than one weapon. Uh, you can move with the D-pad, left, right, climb ladders up and down. And most notably, we have the select button, which pauses the game. Now, the important thing about this is that it basically undoes the moment of temporary invincibility, which any enemy has after you hit them. So we can use this to kind of spam this button. And again, maybe you're familiar with this trick already, but it's very effective in this game. They got rid of it in all subsequent Mega Man games for obvious reasons, but it works very well on the bosses. So if we fire three shots with our Mega Buster, one of them will go into Bomb Man, let's say it's the first boss. And those three shots will only hit him for one damage, because he'll still be kind of temporary invincible for those second and third shots. Now if we tap select in between each bullet, before it goes into Bomb Man, it will hit him for three individual hits. So it's just a much more efficient and just quicker way to take down the bosses, which makes this game a lot more manageable, makes the boss fights more manageable and safer. So we'll be referencing this trick quite a bit. In some cases, we'll give you the, the tips for fighting these bosses more conventionally. But, again, this is one of the more difficult games without that trick, so I recommend using it when you can. And we'll talk more about it moving forward, but, uh, we have our first boss coming up. It's Scary Gary's Boss Beaters! Thank you, Professor! So, yes, we start off with Bomb Man. Uh, so, if you've been following along with the Briggs notes, you'll know that the pause trick is very effective. I recommend it for Bomb Man, this first boss, because we don't have any other items which are effective against him, or weapons, I should say. So I like to use this trick with our normal Mega Blaster, our Pea Shooter, as I like to call it. So every time we fire off one of our bullets, every time one goes into Bomb Man, hit select, on select, the next shot will go in. You can fire maybe like three shots at a time, so just get a nice line in. One hits him, select, unpause. Second one goes in, rinse and repeat over and over again. And then uh, also get as close as you can to Bomb Man and then move away to kind of bait him as soon as he throws that bomb. And always be firing. Repeat the trick and you'll have beaten Bomb Man. All right, thank you very much, Gary. We head straight into Guts Man stage. Guts Man famously weak against bombs. As am I, incidentally, but uh, the beginning of the stage is one of the most difficult parts. Not only of the stage, but this game in general with these platforms that drop away. I recommend jumping a bit early for these cutaway parts. One, to account for your reaction time, and two, just because it's a bit deceiving with uh, when they drop, actually, so it's good to get ahead of it. And then drop in between these two, as we did just there, those two cutaway sections for this bottom one to kind of get the best rhythm. You have to be aggressive and attack it sort of on that that first instance of riding the platforms there, but that's certainly a section where you would benefit from having the uh, the beam magnet, or the magnet beam, whatever the item's called, that we're 
was gonna pick up an Electman stage, but that would require going to Electman stage twice, actually. Because you can only access it after you've either gotten Gutsman's weapon or Electman's weapon to uh, destroy the barriers which are protecting the uh, item. These guys are tough, they take a lot of hits. Even with turbo. You have to have very good reaction speed to uh, get underneath when they do a big jump or just guess right basically, gamble a little bit, but coming up on Guts Man, so Gary, what have you got for us? Boss beaters! Alright, so Guts Man, at the start of the battle, throw a bomb slightly ahead of him because he's gonna jump ahead towards you. Uh, if you throw it where he was standing, he might not be there anymore when the bomb explodes. There's a bit of a delay on the bomb, as you'll find out. So, you uh, always want to basically kind of guess where uh, Gutsman, I should say, is going to be. So throw it ahead of or behind where he's standing at that particular moment when you throw it. So kind of anticipate if he's going to come towards you or behind. And then if he jumps in place... Just, it'll, the explosion will be enough so that you'll still hit him, but, uh, three bombs beats him, not a difficult battle, take him down. That's still two bombs better than I can manage, thank you very much, Gary. As we'll head to Cutman stage next. Cutman weak against Gutsman's power, which we'll talk about in a moment, but let's check in with our resident bestiary and item expert. Blaze to get some info on these items we've been picking up. Alright, thank you very much, Professor. Let's talk about the normal power-ups, which we'll be picking up throughout this game. You'll find these after you kill a lot of enemies. Sometimes they'll just be kind of sitting there, and you can grab them in certain areas. So first, we have this kind of circle-looking dealie when it's the large one. Then we have a smaller version of it. This refills your health, either about a quarter of it for the big one, or just a few meters if you have the small one. Then we have this uh, kind of a more of a, a wider and uh, l less, uh, it's, you know what it looks like right there. That's why we have <laughs> the item guide right there. Uh, but pick this up at a refill your weapon, and there's a smaller version of this as well. The dots, these are just points. And you'll notice that uh, each of these items kind of changes color depending on which weapon you have out at the time. So just something to keep in mind, like the refill weapon power up specifically. Uh, then we have the Universal Mega Man Helmet, which denotes an extra life for Mega Man once you pick it up. Professor. I thank you very much, Blaze. I think most gamers who are familiar with the Mega Man series will recognize most of the items we're picking up. Maybe not so much the, the point balls, basically, but uh, still good to get a refresher course from our item expert. And, as I said, Guts Man, his power, allows us to pick up giant heavy objects, like these kind of brick concentrations that we have around here. It's actually interesting, we can like just pour turbo into one of these guys, and there's some glitch where it won't do any damage to them for some reason. And Pac-Man making an appearance here on Cut's, Cut Man's level for some reason. Not sure what that's about. Maybe that's where all of the uh, Pac-Man characters come from to begin with. I don't know. Maybe they went to college together. Not really sure the backstory there. We'll bring in Fluff in a moment, but probably more about this game in general. But just like that, we're ready to take on Cutman. Some of man Gary is going to show us how this Gutsman power works. Gary, take it away. Boss beaters. All right, Cutman making the classic mistake of leaving these giant stone blocks around for Mega Man to hurl at him. I'm sure the other robots were saying, Cutman, you gotta throw these out. And Cutman say, no, it brings the room together. I'm sorry, I digress. What you need to do to beat Cutman is equip the Gutsman power, lift one of those bricks, and then just make sure you don't throw it at him until he's coming down. He likes to jump a lot. Make sure he's coming down, so you know he's not gonna jump out of the way of this. When you know where he's gonna land, basically throw it right then and there. Two hits will kill him, which is convenient, because that's the number of bricks that he left in his base. Made that classic mistake, leaving his weakness just right there out in the open. It's like a criminal returning to the scene of the crime. They want to get caught, right? 
It's like a cry for help for Cut Man. He wanted to get taken down. Anyway, we'll head straight to Elect Man stage next. And we don't have a graphic or anything designed or queued up or anything, but I have to say, I think Elect Man's music might be my favorite out of uh, the entirety of the Mega Man 1 soundtrack. Capcom games were known for having excellent soundtracks, and Mega Man games especially, but uh, they didn't really settle into that until Mega Man 2, in my opinion, but still, this is a good track. And, uh, you know, we got a little time to kill. Why don't we bring in Fluff to get some some context on Mega Man himself. What can you tell us, Fluff? Mega Man was created by Akira Kitamura, who was working as an artist and game director at Capcom in 1987. The character was directly influenced by Astro Boy, a young android boy character who first appeared in Japanese manga in the 1950s. Here's a nice side-by-side -side comparison of Mega Man without the suit and Astro Boy in his underwear for you. Thanks, Fluff. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. No, uh, I, I do see the resemblance, though. So there you go. The more you know. Did not know that going into this. To be perfectly honest. Don't make the mistake of trying to get that uh, health up there. That's practically a death sentence. It's a very tricky jump getting out of there when the... Uh, the ceiling and the ground are basically extend to the same area. And I recommend going left here. We're going to be seeing these enemies a little bit later on in the game. It's uh, better if you have a Lechman's weapon to defend yourself against them. Can't do much about that here, obviously, but just for future reference. You'll notice certain enemies can only be killed or hurt by certain weapons. In this case, those guys. The little Roombas can only be taken down with the cut man weapon. We have a very important item coming up on the next screen. Blaze, what can you tell us about this one? Alright, the Magnet Beam gets my item of the game award in Mega Man. I love the Sling Professor. Uh, a lot of the difficulty of Mega Man is derived from the pits and just dangerous jumps you have to make in this game. I like to use this item very generously. It uses up uh, like weapon power, just like any other weapon, basically. So top it off as you need to, but certainly don't be afraid to go to the well with this item. Whenever there's a pit, you're not so sure you can make that jump. A little dicey, pull this thing out, it makes a little platform. You can use it to, uh, to kind of climb up. You can use it just to get across long jumps that are a little dodgy, but yes, the magnet beam, excellent item. Go to town on it. Go to town indeed. Good call, Blaze. Yeah, I have no problems with your item of the game designation on that thing. It's kind of a safety blanket for a lot of these uh, tricky pit areas as we move forward. Getting a good amount of use out of it. Finally at the end here. I feel like Electman has one of the longer stages in this game. So I'm going to try to use the magnet beam here to get around this guy. Didn't think those would still be there. A bit easier than trying to, to guess. There we go. Just like we drew it up. Rarely do I find myself using that item so much that I run out of it, so that's why I say, you know, use it generously as you need it. Don't use it just, you know, to get around town for, you know, this or that. It's, it's for use in emergencies mostly, but I'm just saying don't be afraid to, to use it if you're not sure about a particular jump. As we're coming up on a lack man himself, Gary, back to you. Boss beaters. All right, Elect Man, very quick robot, likes to move around. The Cut Man weapon is very powerful against him. Uh, it works kind of like a, uh, a boomerang, and you could use the pause trick to get one good shot in and hit him three times before it even gets back. But three hits will take him down. Not a difficult battle. What is with all the hoarding with all these robots, by the way? Everyone just seems to have giant piles of junk they... I've been meaning to throw away, meaning to take out. Anyway, we're going to Iceman stage next. This is one of the more difficult stages. This is why it's nice to have that magnet beam. 
or beam magnet. I will never remember that. Shoot these guys in the head, otherwise they will split into two. That was one of the Briggs notes, but it's a good rule of thumb for a lot of games. Always be firing. Keep those bullets ahead of you. Weird penguins with uh, little fans, I don't know, little propellers. That's fun. Notice they didn't make the adjustment for a Mega Man in water uh, in this game that would become another hallmark of the Mega Man series. Now, gravity just doesn't affect Mega Man in the same way once he gets underwater. And while we got some more time, Fluff, how about another fact? Here's a fun fact. The blue bomber was almost the white bomber. Oof, sounds like a domestic terrorist. I know, but it's true. Mega Man's creator, Kitamura, initially intended the famous blue bomber suit to be colored white. But he ultimately switched it to blue to make the animation of Mega Man more clear. That sounds a lot like how you explained a couple of classes ago that Link was animated green in part because made for a more distinctive character on the screen, given the Nintendo's graphical limitations. Exactly. It's like they say, necessity is the mother of invention. Or at least the mother of Nintendo characters designed in the late 80s. Wow. White Bomber. This doesn't sound right. But anyway, we can use the magnet beam here to... Give ourselves a little shortcut, not have to deal with those blocks as much. It is a godsend right here, where these jumps can be kind of tricky, and these uh, little robots a bit finicky. Plus, you gotta watch out for the bullets. We can refill our magnet beam right here. Yeah, just throw one out once you get to the kind of the edge of the. Uh, a little floating platform and just like that we made stairs basically all the way across we can get a little top off for it right here again item of the game i don't think we have any more pits but i think we can use it to get around yeah the big suction guy so we'll drop some here it's a nice little natural staircase again each one only lasts for a few seconds but should be enough time to get to where you need to go and just like that, we are already on Iceman. Gary. Boss beaters. All right, Iceman. So you think flames would be the move here? We don't have the flames. Actually, it works out though, because Electman's electrical charge move works better than anything else. And now she works the best for the pause trick as well, because it's so wide, it's so long, and it lingers. And if you just keep tapping pause, on Iceman, it'll kill him in three hits, so just one shot should take him down with that pause trick. Or don't use it, he's easy enough with Alekman's weapon. Alright, thank you very much, Gary. So we head to the final robot stage, Fireman. 80,000 points. They've had a lot of variations on the heat theme over the, uh, over the years in Mega Man games, just off the top of my head. Fireman, right here. Heat Man, Mega Man 2. Shadow Man, truthfully speaking, doesn't seem to have anything to do with flames, but his level had a heck of a lot of lava in it. Something tells me someone at Capcom in the mid 80s didn't, uh. Well, that's a whole nother can of worms. We can use, obviously, the ice beam right there to, to freeze these flames and even use them as a little step up. Refill your health there with them if you need to. You need to get good at anticipating how high these things are gonna go and where to drop one of these. We can combine a couple moves right here to make that work for us just the same. So I understand Fluff has something to tell us about the origins of the name Mega Man itself. I've always been kind of curious how they landed on that. Fluff, what can you share with us? Well, as most folks know, in Japan, Mega Man is known as Rock Man. The name has a couple of meanings. One is it's a reference to rock and roll, hence Mega Man's sister robot named Roll. And the other is that the entire concept of Mega Man is essentially based on the game of rock, paper, scissors, with each robot having strengths and weaknesses to the collectible weapons of the other robots. 
Now, as far as why he's known as Mega Man in the West, you could thank Capcom Consumer Products Division President at the time, Joe Marici, for that change, who felt that the name Rockman was pretty bad and decided that by naming him Mega Man, it would sell much better over here in the States. Another title they kicked around was Rainbow Man, a reference to the fact that Mega Man's color changed depending on which weapon he had equipped. So we were this close to Mega Man being the poster robot for the LGBTQT plus community. So close. And then incidentally, I think things came full circle when uh, there was a fan-made Mega Man game where there was one of the robot masters he fought against was called Rainbow Man, actually. He was like a weather-controlling type robot. Makes sense. So the Elect Man's weapon is a nice, just kind of standard weapon to have equipped. It doesn't eat up a lot of uh, ammunition, basically, and works against most enemies. Does a lot of hits, too. You can see it with the pause trick, we get a lot of hits in. It's very effective against these, uh, well, ironically, I guess they're sprinklers. So, you know, Fireman gets it. He knows he's dangerous. He's making an effort to become OSHA compliant. Gary? Boss beaters. All right, Fireman, so you're probably thinking, well, I bet fire works really well against Iceman, but in this case, the opposite turns out to be true. Um, it's not quite as effective as you think. It's seven hits to take down Fireman. But again, with the pause trick, just fire off the ice beam, and as soon as it makes contact, start slamming on that select button. The same attack will keep cutting through him. He'll be dead before you know it. All right, we are heading into the extra innings now, as it were. Bonus levels. You know how it goes. After we take down the robots, we head to Wily's castle. How many points do we get for him? That's a set 200,000. Calling in his Uber. Little spaceship, he always steps up. There's one convention they had sorted out from day one, basically. The flying saucer, the eyebrow move. Didn't see him go to his, uh, his castle, his fortress. I would for a Mega Man 2, I believe, for that one, but... We still have these extra levels we're fighting through. And again, we can use the Magnet Beam here to get around these guys. They respawn, so you can't go too far to the left, which is why the Magnet Beam's not a bad move. Just make a nice little staircase above these guys. Don't even mess with them. There'll be plenty of refill for our Magnet Beam. Moving forward, as is always the case in these games, they need like a nice combination of all your moves at this point. You usually don't get that on the first try that well. Rhythm's kind of tricky. So these are, we've seen these earlier in the game, and maybe you've experienced this firsthand, but those are death spikes. Like in most Mega Man games, not the, the fun little ouch, I stub my toe spikes, those are, oops, I'm dead. Yes, it certainly helps to have a command over most of the items and weapons in this game at this point. Knowing who and what they're weak and powerful against. Again, we can use the Elect Beam to knock out these things. It all seems a bit arbitrary, though, if I'm honest. I mean, I guess I'm wondering how they came to the decision of some of the strengths versus weakness with the various robots. You know, Fluff explained that, you know, this game really is just a, it's a glorified version of Paper, Rock, Scissors, and I don't disagree with that. Again, note the spikes are very dangerous, so kind of lead with the elect beam here, take one out and then make the jump to get across there safely. It's, it's just the different combinations that don't always make sense to me. Sure, if I were cut man or even if I was the professor of an instructor of a uh, you know semi-successful let's play channel if somebody hurled a giant stack of bricks at me yeah that would probably hurt me but again that only really hurts cut man for whatever reason and a lack man getting hurt with the scissors you know it's it's not perfect science make sure you drop down here Top off your magnet beam if you need to. You probably will at this point in the game. 
or this point of the stage, I should say. It refills between levels, but it's nice they put these here, otherwise you literally couldn't progress past this part in the game. But you certainly need it for this part. I know people have asked, do you need the magnet beam to beat the game? And you get to this part of the level, and yes, you absolutely do need it. Seize it there, and we're coming up on a brand new boss now. Gary? Boss beaters! Alright, finally something different. This is Yellow Devil. Stay one Mega Man length to the right of the middle of the screen when the battle starts, and then jump over the lowest and second lowest pieces that come in from the left. In terms of offense, fire the Elect Man move uh, at the eye. Once Yellow Devil is assembled, use the pause trick. Seven hits will take him down. If you're lucky, if you're effective, if you're good, you could take it down before he reconfigures himself on the left side of the screen. But, uh, yeah, that's a good place to stand, and that's the move to go to. All right, thank you, Gary. I like that guy. You see him in a, a few Mega Man games. They recycle that yellow devil. Hey, yellow devil. Almost like a term of endearment. So we got some tricky jumps around here. Again, go to, right off the bat, go to the, uh, the beam. Magnet beam, if you need a little help here. And there's going to be a hidden drop off here. And this begins the boss rush section. It's not strictly a boss rush like it is in subsequent Mega Man games. We don't have, like, one giant nexus where all the enemies come from, but... I'm not going to bring in Gary for this part, because again, we're just fighting the same bosses over again. The only problem this time is, with Cutman, is that uh, he got rid of all the junk he learned from his mistake. So we're going to use the Flame Fireman weapon. And while we do the pause trick, let's bring in Fluff one more time. One of the many hallmarks of the Mega Man series is the eight unique robot masters in each game. Mega Man 1 is the odd man out with only six, but the truth is, they were always meant to be eight robots. They just ran out of time. This meant the extra robot they had designed, the objectively lame-sounding Bond Man, was cut. Possibly by Cut Man. That is pretty lame, though. Not that uh, we don't we didn't get eight robots. If uh, if what they were coming up with for those last two, or if Bond Man was a representation of that, is what I'm trying to say, then I don't think we missed out on too much. Um, but I'm just thinking, like, this is the first Mega Man game, as we use Cut Man's weapon again. You know, they had any element, any item, any thing in existence to choose from. And, you know, sure, Fire Man, Ice Man, yeah, we can give them all those. But Bond Man? It's a head-scratcher. And I know the backstory is, you know, Dr. Light invented these robots, you know, to sort of help around the old lab and everything. And they all have a purpose in that sense for good. So I guess you could argue Bond Man would have some sort of useful purpose. But uh, still, I could think of a lot of things, a lot of themes that I'd go to before uh, Bond Man. As we were just slicing and dicing, I love this, the use of it right here. Take it down a whole row of guys with that one move. But this is the, uh, this is the weapon to use in this section of the game for, again, for most sections. When you have it. Alright. The scariest enemy sometimes is yourself. Gary? Boss beaters! All right, the clone, exact same move here. We want to use Elect Man's weapon, actually, with the pause trick. Uh, the reason we want to use Elect Man is because it just works the best when it comes to cutting through and getting the most bang for your buck, basically, with one shot. You'll notice the clone will use the same move, but thankfully his moves don't affect you the same way your moves affect him in regard to the pause trick. Just keep milking it with the Elect Man attack against him, and the clone will be down before you know it. There can only be one. You're the one. Alright. Little Highlander meets Matrix right there. I like it. The disco backdrop there. 
Not sure what that's about. Kind of reminds me of the bonus stage in Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu, actually. To throw out a very random reference there. We're getting close now, though, class. Congratulations. Pat yourself on the back for getting this far. Just one more boss before the final boss. Penultimate boss coming up. Really, but this area is pretty linear, straightforward. It's about to get flooded, so thankfully we are a robot. And thankfully Dr. Light thought to make us rust-proof. Move here, I, I like to equip just the, the regular blaster and just fire. Got these penguins coming in. Just start running to the right to kind of pick up your speed, get through here a little faster. Midway through, it's going to switch over to these missiles that explode, at which point I just like to start jumping over them. The explosion kind of lingers, and you'll get caught in it, so just kind of jump rope here, and you'll make it to the end of the level. All right, Gary, penultimate boss, what do you got? Boss beaters. All right, CWU, uh, whatever. Uh, this guy, the bubble, bubble robot guy, I don't know. So, a good rule of thumb here, stay in the bottom left and just use the regular attack if you have turbo going, or you can use Electric Man's power, or Elect Man, sorry, with the pause trick for the first three hits. So once you do enough damage to him each time, his bubble will burst and a seventh of his health will disappear. So I like to kind of do these conventional attacks for the first three hits because he gets faster each time. All right, so at that point, after the first three, we could switch over to Guts, man, pick up the debris in the room, and then throw it at the bubble one at a time for those last four hits to finally take him down. Good strategy. I like that one, Gary. Looks like Mega Man's doing some sort of dab or some sort of... Maybe to throw out his back or something? I'm not sure. Is he alright? I guess he's alright. He's warping in like a champ. By the way, if he can beam everywhere like that, why doesn't he just... Kinda, you know, go straight to Wily's base in the first... Never mind. Stupid questions, right? Yeah, the elect man's move a lot better for getting through that particular area. If you need to top anything off... And grab that. We have a very useful item coming up, though, that Blaze is going to tell you about. So I wouldn't worry about topping anything off at the moment. Since we do have said weapon coming up, but yeah, I'll head and tell you more about it. So you can see, mass producing those Guts Man robots. Or starting to, I guess, is the idea. You probably want to have that magnet beam out one more time here. Don't risk it with that jump right there. You can just squeeze enough out. It's kind of a tricky jump. This whole section's kind of tricky, but... So we're going to wait for this platform to come back. And then get this item on the right. Blaze? Alright, you get this one right before the end of the game. Only appearance in Mega Man that I know of. The Yashichi. I'm probably butchering that, but this item right here refills every single weapon that you have, including the magnet beam. So pick this up, this will top you off when you need it most for that final boss rush stretch of Mega Man. But there you go. Good call, thank you very much boys. Nice to have a top off on everything for this final stretch of the boss rush. And again, flames work very well on Bomb Man. It's kind of coming full circle, you know. We started on Bomb Man, we end it on Fire Man, so the, the flames work very well against the bomb. As you'd expect, I mean, in the sense that it would set it off. I just had to try this for myself, but fire not hurting Iceman? I don't know. I guess the electricity versus the liquid form is the argument they're trying to make there, and those don't mix, but still. I just like to try out some of these combinations. Flames? Eh. Alright, well we know the bombs work. Let's chuck one over here. Ah. Had just enough hang time there. You know, get to put Gary's recommendations into practice here. Not putting it right on top of him, but kind of leading him. 
or dropping it right in front of or behind him, basically. Now let's go back to the flame. That didn't work horribly against Guts, man. Get a couple hits here. And he got one more good lick in on us. For good measure. Alright, but this is it. Final boss time. I'm gonna hand you over to Gary. Gary, bring us home. Boss beaters. Alright, Wily, phase one. Uh, aim at the turret, and then you can use Fireman's power for just seven hits, or you can use Select Man's power for 28 hits with the pause trick. The thing is, it, his beam works so well that you can get a lot of mileage out of each shot, basically. So you could probably get away with only firing about four or five of Elect Man's beams and taking them down. In that second form, it's the exact same thing. Just fire at kind of that ball, that dot, at the front of Wily's little ship, and then just keep going to town on that pause trick with Elect Man's beam, and he'll be dead before you know it. Congratulations, you've beaten the first of many Mega Man games. Yes, many is an understatement when it comes to the Mega Man series, but nonetheless, excellent tips today, Gary. Thank you. Thank you to all my TAs. Did a great job, and thank you very much. Congratulations to you as well, the player. As Wily begs for forgiveness there, and we get our full 200,000 points. Except we had to take down, like, three bosses en route to him, plus that boss rush as well, but... Anyway, Mega Man has ended the evil domination of Dr. Wily and restored peace to the world. Paraphrasing. However, the never-ending battle continues until all destructive forces are defeated. It's like they knew. Fight Mega Man for everlasting peace. It's almost like the developers kind of threw that in. They're like, huh? Higher-ups at Capcom, what do you think? We make another 176 of these. Better than some games, I'll say that. And there have been some excellent games in this series. Very much looking forward to the next class in the Mega Man series for Mega Man 2. As Mega Man changes out of his suit, there's that Astro Boy look that Fluff shared with us earlier. I did see that comparison there when you've got that side by side. Honestly, not that bad of an ending compared to a lot of the games that came out around the same time. Ah, Yuki-chan's papa. Excellent work, as always. And there's Roll and Dr. Light waiting for us. Presented by Capcom. Thank you one last time for attending this class. Please remember to receive full credit to like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Leave a comment in the comment section. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and comment on this video. And click subscribe if you haven't already. As this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now.